all right what is good youtube it's your boy rebel back with another tutorial and today we have a new upscaler so this node right here is the die p node for flux um here is the page on it on github so it stands for dynamic position extrapolation so what essentially this model does is it takes advantage of the spectral progression inherent to the diffusion process. By dynamically adjusting the model's positional encodings at each step, the DIP matches their frequency spectrum with the current stage of the generation process. Focusing on the low frequency structures early on and resolving high frequency details in later steps. This prevents repeating artifacts and structural degradation typically seen when pushing models beyond their native resolution. So essentially what this means is it's going to focus early on low frequency structures, so like low detail, and later on in the generation it fo focuses on the refined high frequency details. So this is like similar to like uh, WAN 2.2 with the high and low noise um, models. So, but it's just baked into one specific node. So you're going to find, and I have some examples for you today to like compare this to like a, another upscaling workflow that I have, which actually also uses SRPO um, to help refine. You're going to see some surprising results. And it's, I think it has to deal with the fact that this node corrects a lot of the uh, mistakes that the base model will make, especially with the, the guff model. Um, this corrects hands, eyes, you know, morphing, extra limbs. It does a lot. So, so I do have two workflows for you today. I have the version one, which is just the standard flux dev without the SRPO. And then I have right here, if you click this little tab, you'll get the SRPO refining upscale so essentially you're just going to add you know 5 to 15 to 20 steps to give some adjusted detail with the srpo refinement which kind of really does help in a lot of ways the second workflow i have for you guys today is my updated version 2 of my standard real esergen upscaling with the srpo and then also optionally, if you want to speed up your first pass process, you can download this Turbo Alpha LoRa from Flux. You can knock the sampling steps down to about eight on the first pass, and this does help with time. As far as the workflow goes, the only thing that I would tell you to keep in mind is your empty latent image node is the node that is going to have your high values that you want upscaled to. Your DIP node is only going to be for the base resolution that you want your image to be and aspect ratio. So if you want a square image, you would make the values the same. If you want a portrait image, you would make the height larger. If you want a landscape image, you would make the width larger. This currently is set to a landscape upscale at 2K resolution. It is not a 4K. This can go all the way up to 4K. So I do have some examples for you guys today. Before I show you these examples, I do want to point out that all of these are ran at the same seed with the same denoise value at 35 steps, whether it's um, 25 on the first pass and 10 on the second pass for the SRPO models or just strictly 35 steps for the dev only, all of these settings are matched as closely as possible and the prompts are all the same for each comparison. Um, first we're going to take a look at the DIP workflow versus my workflow and we're going to compare results and then we're going to go down to just the base dev model with DIP and then dev plus SRPO so you can see the difference in what refinement really does for your images so 
Let's take a look at this first prompt I did. Um, it's just for a woman standing in a city at night, essentially. Um, if you take a look, though, you'll notice some slight morphing issues going on the closer you look in, especially with the eyes. It does tend to handle hands for the most part very well. Um, this is my workflow with the real Essergan upscaler instead of the node, the new DIP node. Um, I do tend to find that in most of the examples here, you're going to see that the real Essergan kind of performs a little bit better when it comes to preserving the detail and not causing hallucination or morphing. Um, here's another example here. Same prompt, but just swapped out for a man. So again, you can kind of get in on the image. You'll start to see some of the imperfections that build up. Um, the hands, though, are very nice. And this is my workflow. Again, you'll see some, you know, morphing and hallucination going on. But that's pretty standard. It's going to happen with all, you know, image models, especially with Flux. So... This one did surprise me at the amount of difference here in just character alone. You're going to notice, like, the DIP tends to really, really change the image. This is just standard flux dev with the SRPO being, you know, thrown over top of it without any um, artifact or changes from the DIP node. So... This really does, I mean, it's kind of crazy, the amount of difference. So we'll go over to an anime example because I know that this is going to be something people want to look at. So my workflow kind of brought more realism to the anime for some reason. And I think that's due to the fact that it's not being patched by the node. But this kind of kept it anime true, like true anime. So what I do want to do is go down here to these examples and show you the DIP with dev only and then dev SRPO. So these are the same, again, same step count, seed, denoise, everything is exactly the same, prompt, everything. So this is just the standard DIP upscale with flux dev. And this is the DIP with SRPO. So again, just with the base model, which I believe this is used for just the base model of Flux, this does correct a lot of mistakes that are usually found in the base model. Hands, I mean, finger count, everything seems to be correct. And I mean, like certain detail that was added to the image, you know, that's not even in the SRPO. We'll take a look over here. So this is just standard flux. This is flux plus SRPO. You can see that it provides a little bit more dynamic lighting, um, a little bit more texture and difference, especially to the hair and skin. Gives it more realism. Uh, we'll go to the beach scene. This one was a little bit surprising as well. So this is where you can really see the difference between the standard and the SRPO. SRPO kind of gives a little bit more facial structure and kind of gets rid of that fluxy base look with the chin and jawline. Kind of smooths it out a little bit more. Not too much, but a little bit. Thinned it out. We'll go to the anime scene here. And what you'll notice here is this is where you'll see the difference between SRPO and regular flux in anime. So so if you guys want these workflows, they are linked in the description. This comparison Workflow is actually also on my Civit AI in the description as well. 
But that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment to let me know how I did today. Also, if you enjoyed what you saw, you can like the video. It helps a lot. Uh, go ahead and test this upscale model out and let me know your guys' thoughts. Have a good day.